No, I was gonna say, what do you consider like a nice breakfast, vegan breakfast? Cereal. <laughs> That's what? That's not even that. Yeah, like, like oat cereal for breakfast. Oatmeal. Oatmeal. Oh, and then cool. like some cereal with like a little bit of sugar and chocolate and yes. almond milk. Of course, obviously. It is a very nice day today in LA and I wanted to talk about why you shouldn't think about spending money on VSTs or at, like add-ons to your software before you learn everything your program already has in it. For example, FL Studio comes with so many great integrated plugins and I don't even I don't even think you necessarily need to spend money at all at any point to make great tracks. I think that a lot of the plugins that you can buy your your software already has it. Um my god. Stop honking. Holy crap. Ruining my video. People that hug like that there's only so many different effects the developers can make because what is there in terms of effects? There is phaser, chorus, um, delay, reverb, and a, a few other ones like vocoders, but there's not really like that much they can do within those effects. Like they can have their own modulation stuff, um, which Ableton, for example, has really good modulation in in those effects. Um, in Reason, you can make it all yourself because of the wiring stuff and the CV stuff. So you could just like use an LFO from Malmstrom, for example, and link it to the controls in in the chorus or the the phaser or whatever. So you don't really like need that next phaser plugin because you can most likely already do the same things in the one that you already have in your program. So it's just about learning how to use the one that you already have and learning how it sounds when you put it on your sound. Like for example, I can, when I'm making a sound, because I've been using my phaser plugin so much and well, all the different plugins in the software, I kind of already know which sound is going to sound good on my sound. So like when I'm working on a, on a sound, I can imagine how a phaser would sound on a specific setting. It's still like a, a certain degree of experimentation, of course, is always needed, but it really helps to get an idea of how every plugin is gonna sound on your synth or whatever you're working on. If you're at that point, you can pretty much make anything out of anything. Like, I could take a clap and stretch it and put effects on it and turn it into a rhythm synth. And it doesn't really matter if I have the greatest new VSTs for it or not. I don't need to spend money or that much money on my on plugins i mostly use whatever already comes with ableton and then of course sometimes when you're at a point where you feel like you know everything and you need something new to like inspire you that's when you can start thinking about spending money on new stuff like for example, um, I got pretty bored of wavetable synthesis myself because I played with Serum for so long that it just kind of got boring. So I wanted to try new types of thin synthesis. And there wasn't that much in Ableton that you could do. Like you could do that, you could use a simpler, but I didn't like it that much. Um, it's not really, where I wanted, what I wanted to do. And then, so I wanted to find more of a sample-based synthesizer. And then Virtual Riot showed me this thing called um, Form for Reactor. And 
it was a completely new new thing like it it was something that doesn't come with your software already like it it wasn't integrated in ableton or anything so i bought that for like a hundred dollars or something and it was nice it was a new way to make sounds and it helped me expand my palette of ways to make music or tools to make music forgive his voice is cracking yeah he's going through puberty <laughs> puberty is hitting me now that i'm 22 um but yeah all i wanted to say is that you don't need to spend tons of money on stuff on bsts on whatever because most likely you can make sick sounds and sick tracks with what you already have, which is Ableton, FL Studio, Reason, any modern program. Garage there you band. go. Garage Band. No, <laughs> can you Maybe make rhythm with Garage Band? I don't know. That would be interesting. You should try to make that. I should. Tr that's actually a good <laughs> thing for another you now, video. Today, 14 of. April 2019, I challenged Infect to do a rhythm track with GarageBand. Okay. <laughs> I will, to prove my point, I will give it a try <laughs> and see if you can, you can use GarageBand to make a rhythm track. Um, yeah. There you go. That was my message. Please. Give the video a like, it really helps the channel. And subscribe. I wanna try to make more like videos on a regular basis. So like let's say every Sunday, every Monday or something. I don't know yet. I'll think about it. Um even if it's just videos like us going to the thrift store, like the one we made. Or grocery shopping. Or grocery <laughs> shopping. 